Good morning everyone, and today we are checking out the second to last episode of the Mythal Lethal storyline, Killer Chimeras and the Decline to Tarsa. That's right, after this there will only be one more, and there's also a special surprise on Friday. No, it's not the finale episode, even though that is out, it's instead gonna be part one of the final battle of the Summoner's Beast storyline. Now let's hop in and see what kind of monsters they have to kill to finally kill this Overseer. In today's episode of Mythal Lethal, I will be combining subscribers submitted mythological creatures to create the Chimera for this episode. I will also be showing off the submissions that came in. Now hit like if you want, subscribe if you feel like, but either way, enjoy, enjoy the, the show. show. And now we hop right on into it. So, you two are seriously just gonna bring that piece of the sphere right to Tarsa? Oh my, I'm sorry. I saw that fish man and I am laughing because that was hilarious. You don't want to take a few minutes to think that through? Ares asked, scanning the chaotic scene of gods and mortals, adjusting to the mountain now spawning from the center of Olympia, and the horrific chimeras swarming the city. Ortis and Mythal picked themselves up as Ortis replied, I don't think we have a choice. Look what Tarsa was able to prepare in just a few weeks. If she does retreat to take even a year to make more monsters, imagine the damage she could do. Oh, yeah. Dark clouds are spreading across the sky, emanating from the top of the dark mountain. They didn't have long to meet Tarsa's deadline. Ares shook his head. Well, I don't like it, but you might have a point, kid. Just be ready. Tarsa will probably have some kind of nasty tricks up her sleeve waiting for you. <laughs> Ortis looked down at his bow and replied. Yeah, well, we might have some waiting for her, too. He turned to Mythal, who had thin streams of white mist spewing from her nostrils. Mythal, find Lorna and meet me at the base of the mountain. I'll go get the orb shard from Brigitte. That. She nodded and leapt onto a nearby roof. Ares said, I'm coming with you, kid. I may not be able to come to fight Tarsa with you, but I can at least help you with these... Ugh, chimera, till you get there. Thanks, Ares. Let's go. They be. ran back towards the spot where Ortis had seen Brigid helping Amphanella oh, earlier. There it is. As they ran, Ortis looked down a street. Well, hey, at least we see what it is now. They passed to see a troop of human soldiers hurling weapons and readying up. Seconds later, a two-headed aquatic-looking chimera charged right through them. It smacked two soldiers- Interesting choices to fuse together. Not hating it, just loving it. ...as a side with its webbed claws and snatched up another two in its mouths, instantly chomping the life out of them. Ortis's heart sank at the sight, and he skidded to a stop, pulled back a piercing arrow on Suriastra, and fired it. It struck the side of the monster, but barely burned into its scaly, wet flesh. However, it did make the creature take notice of him. It hurled its two victims away, ignoring the other mortal soldiers slicing weapons at it ineffectively. It shrieked through both its mouths, one of them splitting its jaw open in four different directions with purple slime dripping from it. Oh, it started damn. charging down the street towards Ortis and Ares. Oh, we didn't have time for this sort of thing, kid. I know, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Ortis drew back another really piercing emotions. arrow, this time aimed down the throat of the quad split mouth. He loosed the shot, but the creature easily ducked under it and kept running. Ares spun the runes on his chest, opening a floating array of weapons. He pulled out a massive axe and stomped towards the beast. All right, you gnarly affront to nature. Which end do you want to lose first? The four-pronged mouth suddenly spat a ball of purple slime at Ares. He held his axe uh -oh. face Careful. first and it splatted against it. Some splashed past and hit Ares in the face. Instantly, steam started sizzling off him. Oh, that kind of stinks. Not that it is. He leapt off the ground <laughs> so forcefully that the marble and stone where his feet Quahead it is. left shattered and blew backwards. He swung the axe in a full circle right down towards the beast's neck. Despite his incredible speed, the other head was able to snatch him by the ankle, yank him off course, and slam him into the ground. From there, he swung the axe again, but this time at the mouth gripping his leg. He struck it in the top of the head, but like Ortis's arrow, the blade barely pierced its flesh. It didn't even react as if the strike had hurt. The monster swung Ares up in the air, then slammed him back down into the ground again, still gripping his leg. The other mouth opened, Damn, readying up hot. another glob of purple slime. Ares swung his axe at the jaw of the one gripping him at the same time that Ortis fired a piercing arrow, nearly hitting its eye. It was disoriented by both strikes, enough that Ares managed to break his leg loose and roll out of the way of the coming ball of slime. It struck the street and started dissolving the marble beneath him. Ares leapt far enough away that Ortis drew back a shot, saying, Classic arrow, 20% power. 
He fired it for the center of the beast's body. It tried there to leap go. over, but was still struck under its belly. The explosion sent it tumbling backwards with a burning hole in its stomach. It crashed to the ground, but spun back to its feet and charged at Ortis furiously. Ares leapt onto its back and swung his axe into it, but it didn't even flinch. It kept coming and fired another glob of acid slime at Ortis. He shot a piercing arrow right through the slime. The blob exploded, but part of it still managed to splash onto Ortis's breastplate. He ignored it at first, pulling back another shot, but then noticed the foul-smelling steam billowing up into his face. He looked down and saw the acid was actually melting through his armor. Oh, uh, Ares? Shit, that is I got you, kid. Stuff. Get that thing off. Guess Efe's armor wasn't ready for Darso's biggest and baddest. Ares flipped off the chimera to be in front of it, tossed his axe aside, and thrust his shoulder between both its heads. His feet dug right down into the stone street, and he stopped the beast in its tracks. It thrashed both its heads at him, but he pounded it over and over with his fists, switching from one head to the other. Meanwhile, Ortis unclipped and hurled off his breastplate before the acid could get through. Oh, damn, being down a piece close. of armor was bad, but it was better than being melted. Ares yelled back to Ortis as he brawled. Tarsa definitely put a lot more into these big ugly mutts than those other beasts. I'll oh, handle yeah, this thing. Go get the shark from Brigid. Try not to draw any more attention to yourself, and in case I don't see you again before you get to Tarsa. He leapt a few feet back from the Chimera to give Ortis a firm, confident look in the eyes. You've come a long way since I met you, kid. Mythel too. Show Tarsa for all of us that she messed with the wrong world. Ortis smiled proudly. Take him down. Thanks, Ares. For everything. We'll grab a bite when we get back. Ortis wanted to stay and help, but knew he had a more important task. He ran through a few streets, ducking behind some fallen pillars as another vicious chimera charged past after more soldiers. He desperately wanted to help them too, but tried to stay focused. Defeating Tarso would save a lot more lives in the long run. Oh, he got yeah. back to where he'd last seen Brigid. You know, I wonder if uh, if you are able to take the beast ball from, uh, I'm sorry, the multiversal orb from her, would you then be able to stop the chimeras? Would they just disappear or, well, not? I'm, I'm gonna doubt myself and say you know, that once the beast is created, they cannot be uncreated without death. But she was nowhere to be found. Luckily, Orta soon spotted another familiar figure. Quetzalcoatl was in his serpent form in the skies above. A three-headed flaming chimera was trying to take him down, but he managed to bite into its middle neck and coil his body around the beast's wings. Together, they dropped to the street below. Quetzalcoatl remained coiled around it, squeezing the beast to death. Ortis ran up. Nice. Quetzalcoatl, you look like you finally got healed after your battle with Shiva. Was it by Brigid? Do you know where she is? I do indeed. I just saw her healing Pele after a particularly fierce chimera surprised her in the mountain's appearance. Pele. I can take you to her. The god rapidly tightened its body even more and there was a set of sharp snapping sounds that gave Ortis an uncomfortable chill. Oh. Quetzalcoatl uncoiled from the creature, Snap leaving it limp. It. Ortis was about to leap onto the Aztec god's neck when he noticed something odd. There was a black smoke and spheres rising from behind some debris. It looked familiar. He quickly ran over and pushed some rocks aside to find Shiva's trident, Trishula. It Ooh. was a mighty astra, like his bow, Suryastra. He reached down and gently gripped it, unsure if it would hurt him as the flames of Surya's bow did when he didn't wear the gauntlet Ares had given him. As his hand grazed it, he could certainly feel overwhelming power surging from it into him, but it wasn't hurting. Oh, this However, is be good. he did get the sense that if he wasn't wearing enchanted armor, he wouldn't be able to wield it. He clipped Suryastra to his back and ran back over to Quetzalcoatl, with the new weapon in hand. He leapt onto the Aztec god's neck, and as they flew off, he explained what had just happened with Tarsa. They swooped to the base of the mountain where Kagatsuki, <laughs> Amphanela, Fenrir, and a troop of mortal soldiers were all fending off a set of Chimera that now were trying to reach awesome. Brigid as she used the Orb Shard to finish healing Pele. The Fire Goddess was just getting up and thanking Brigid as Ortis leapt off Quetzalcoatl. Brigid, I'm sorry, but we need the Orb Shard. Mythal Lorna and I are going to finish off Tarsa. Not without me, you're not. Amphanella, in her giantess form, was grappling one of the Chimera and tossed it towards Fenrir, who chomped onto one of its wings and drove it into the ground. Ooh! Amphanella okay. knelt next to Ortis. Eat up, Fenrir. You need it. I want to see the end of this conflict with my own eyes. The Norns once told me I'd be leaving the Beast Farm to partake in a conflict that would change the world. This is surely that. Ortis was surprised. Oh, that's cool. Was that one of those things you muttered back when, you know, you used to do that? Hmm, possibly, yes. <laughs> Ortis nodded. Possibly. Right, well, unfortunately, if anyone comes with us, Tars is just going to bail and make even more monsters. But 
M. Vanilla, you've already done more than almost anybody else to help us change the world. Despite us having met by me literally destroying your home and creatures, you helped Again, save Mithril from the Underworld, and have probably saved a lot of lives here today. When Mithril kills Tarsa, it'll only have been possible because of your help. You may not be able to come with us, but you've already done so much. So, thank you. There was a pause. Then, Amphanella shrunk down into her human form right mm -hmm. in front of Ortis. She stepped towards him and gave him a hug. Yes! He hugged I was her about back. to say hug! She stepped back after a moment and said, You have proven to be a much more noble man than I assumed you to be from our first interaction. Be safe, Ortis Fanimo. He nodded and Brigid handed him the orb shard. She said, Many details about the use of this object are still a mystery to me, but at camp I was able to show Mithil how to use it to amplify her might. Still, if Tarsa sweet. has the rest, there is likely far more she can do with it. No, I know. Don't worry. I have some ideas on how to make the odds as even as possible. Ortis realized he was already where he needed to be to meet Mithil, so he started doing what he could against the nearest Chimera. Meanwhile, he started getting anxious as he noticed the clouds above spreading farther and farther. He could still make out blue skies in the distance, but it would likely only be a few more minutes before they needed to be at the top of the mountain. Thankfully, another of the mutated beasts crashed down onto a temple near Ortis. Mithil and Lorna were both on its back, and regardless of how many heads the beast had had when they began fighting it, now it had none. <laughs> the two god quellers nice. leapt off to join Ortis. Mithil looked down at his chest. Ortis, what do you think you are doing without the most important piece of your armor? A uh, chimera got it covered in acid and I had to ditch it. She grabbed his arm and started looking around. Well, you're not going to face Tarsa without a full set. Let's find Hephaestus. I could obviously use more armor myself. She had even less armor remaining than he did. Ortis put his hand oh, on damn. hers. I know it's not ideal, but we don't have time. The clouds have nearly overtaken the sky. We have to get up to Tarsa now. She was about to protest when he handed her Trishula. She took hold of it, and a spurt of black mist burst from her eyes. Well, this feels powerful. Ooh. But it does not change the fact that I'm displeased about your whole armor situation. Though, you are correct, we must be off. Now. Yeah, Lorna craned her neck to look up at the mountain. Please tell me we have an easier way than simply climbing to Tarsa. Mithil shoved her, chuckling. <laughs> a god queller, Lorna. You oh, could leap up yep. the side in a matter of minutes. Well, it's still more effort than I'd like to exert. How many things am I going to have to do today? Thankfully, Ortis had already secured a faster route. He waved down Quetzalcoatl, who hadn't gone far, and soon, Mithil, Lorna, and Ortis were astride his back on their way to face Tarsa. Mithil was sat behind Ortis, holding on to Quetzalcoatl's fur and Trishula with one hand, but the other she wrapped around Ortis's unarmored torso. You have to stay as far from Tarsa as you can. Mortal lives are already far too short as it is. I'm not losing you before I've barely had a chance to be with you. Aww. He put a hand on her arm. I'll be alright, Mithil, but for the sake so of the nice. whole world, you need to focus on Tarsa and not worry about me. She leaned her head against the back of his. You matter more to me than the whole world, Ortis. His heart really swelled even in the face of the trial before them. Mithil suddenly turned back to Lorna and said, Oh, uh, you too, sister. <laughs> Lorna was holding tight with one hand and carried the orb shard in her other as she replied, What's that? I was ignoring your lovey-dovey talk because I was too focused on the winged death monster headed our way. Oh, alright. Well, we've gone from um, this aquatic acid chimera to uh, some flying bio chimera. What's next? A booming roar Inside. rolled like thunder across the skies and quickly got closer. Ortis and Mithil turned to where Lorna was looking to see another chimera headed towards them. This one was the biggest they'd seen yet, stretching at least as long as Quetzalcoatl, but having a heavy set body that seemed too big to be carried even by its massive wings. Damn. But it had one head like a blend of an elephant and a tiger, and the other that was more akin to an armor-headed long-fanged lion. Classic arrow, 50% okay. power, Ortis yelled, gripping Quetzalcoatl with his legs. Mithil held him steady as he loosed the shot. The creature didn't even try to dodge. It was struck right in the chest and barely fell off course. Making things worse, the flames that erupted from the shot absorbed onto its claws and just turned them into blazing paws, ready to tear oh, through Quetzalcoatl. From behind Mythal, Lorna called. Oh, well done, Ortis. If you'd like, I've got a knife you could hand the creature as well. Ortis ignored hey, her and fired on. a broadshot at the fast-approaching beast. The purple barrage of arrows struck it in multiple places, 
but none did any damage, and it seemed to just further charge up its claws. Okay, looks like this is gonna be a two-piece episode. I'm not hating that, but I'm just pointing it out. Hold on. Quetzalcoatl said as he stopped ascending and soared down to dodge the coming creature. He flew straight towards the mountainside and swooped along it. God Quellers, take Ortis and climb from here. I'll handle the beast. Still holding Ortis, Mythal leapt off Quetzalcoatl and landed on a ledge of the mountain, soon joined by Lorna. Quetzalcoatl turned back to the approaching creature, but it tackled into him, biting into his side with both heads. It then swatted its flaming claws across there his underbelly, making him instinctively cry out. The Aztec god shifted into his axe-wielding human form and swung at one of the creature's necks. But, like Ares had found, the strike barely broke skin. The creature tucked its wings, swung its body around, and smacked Quetzalcoatl with its tail, sending him tumbling down towards the ground. The creature then turned back to the god quellers, soaring straight towards Mythal with a familiar rage in its eyes. It felt like being approached by Tarsa. Mythal leapt with Ortis in her arms higher up the mountain. The chimera- If I had to guess, each one of these chimeras literally has Tulsa's rage imbued into it. Chimera crashed into the spot they'd just been. Mythal's eyes darted around when they landed. Where's Lona? Was she hit? Ortis pointed to a ledge right next to the monster. Lorna was there on her back. She sat up with a knife in one hand and the orb shard in the other. The beast pulled back into the air and aimed both its heads towards her. Oh, don't look at me like that. I'm not even close to the biggest threat to you, monster. It didn't care. The monster raised its flaming paw, but Mythal quickly set Ortis down and sprinted down the mountainside yeah, in a stream of white and black smoke, gripping Trishula tightly. She reached her sister and raised the trident just as the flaming claw was inches from Lorna. The limb struck the trident and the claw was immediately sliced off. Flames Ooh. and blood burst around Mythal and Lorna, but neither were hurt as the severed paw tumbled down the mountainside. The okay, that trident has some serious power. The creature briefly retreated, adjusting its flight with one less limb, but quickly turned back to its targets. Luckily, Quetzalcoatl had recovered, turned back into a serpent, and soared up, chomping into the beast's underbelly. He wrapped himself around the chimera, trying to pin its wings, but struggling to hold them down. Mythal looked at Trishula, fascinated, then put her hand on the shard of the multiversal orb. She took a deep breath and started uncontrollably cackling. White lightning burst out of the shard across her body onto Trishula. The trident oh was swirled in white and black god queller smoke and grew to nearly five times the length of Mythal's body. Oh damn, Orta saw this and called out. Uh, Quetzalcoatl, we appreciate your help, but I think Mythal needs you to get out of the way. The godly yeah, serpent looked over it. to see Mythal with her mighty weapon. He instantly released the chimera and shot into the air above it. Ortis wouldn't have even seen that she'd swung the weapon if it weren't for the stream of smoke behind it and the black wave of dark energy that erupted out of it like a colossal blade. It struck the chimera and carved straight through it, slicing the beast in half. Both pieces fell back towards Olympia below, and the blade of darkness continued to soar off into the distance. Ortis muttered, Wow, I really hope that doesn't go on to hit anything important. <laughs> Mythal released the orb shard uh, and Trishula shrunk know. back down to its normal size. With Lorna holding the shard, Mythal leapt back up to grab Ortis. With my power, this weapon you found, and the shard? This may actually be an easy fight against Tarsa. Ortis smiled. I appreciate the optimism, but remember, Tarsa has much more of the orb than we do. This I think to make this fight good. go our way, we need to make sure nobody is using it. I trust your strength and determination a lot more than I trust the orb. Quetzalcoatl picked up the three warriors again and flew to just below the top of the mountain. The last blue in the sky was finally disappearing. They thanked Quetzalcoatl for the help and climbed the last few paces to get to a jagged rocky platform surrounded by a crimson light barrier. Lorna swung a hand there to wrap is. her knuckle against it, but her hand went right through. You, you all may enter, enter but, but this, this will ensure no, no other meddling, meddling gods, gods interrupt, interrupt us. us, the disembodied voice of Tarsa echoed out to them. They all gave each other one last assured look and stepped inside. As soon as they did, the orb shard nearly flew out of Lorna's hand. Wait, no, I, I can't hold it! Mithil tried to grab her, but Lorna was pulled off her feet with the orb flying across the mountaintop. Stepping out from around a jagged stony spike, Walt's Tarsa, holding the rest of the orb. She held out her free hand and snatched Lorna's piece and slammed Lorna into the ground. In a fraction Ow. of a second, she tore the piece from Lorna, put it back in place attached to the rest of the orb, then grabbed Lorna's hand, put her knife in it, and forced Lorna to hold a blade to her own neck. Mythal was about to sprint in to help, but Tarsa said, One step closer and I cut the number of god quellers in this world in half. Mythal stopped moving. Well, well, Ortis you know. could feel the rage bursting off her. 
He'd expected himself to be scared if something like this happened, but he felt oddly calm. He'd anticipated Tarsa getting the full orb back at some point. It didn't change his plan. Release my sister this instant, Tarsa! She's not the one who's trained to face you! She's hardly even a god queller! Lorna tried I mean, to nod, true. but the blade was in her way. She's right, you know. I just want to get home and read. God quelling is really not my thing. Tarsa pushed the blade farther down and Lorna gritted her teeth. The blade glided ever so slightly into her neck and white lines started spreading from it. Stop it! Mithil yelled. Oh, Tarsa crap. didn't push it any farther. Here is what's going to happen, God Reaper. Now that my orb has been fully restored, I will fight you once again. You will fail to do even the slightest amount of harm to me, and I will bring you to the brink of death just to prove a point to you. Then, you will have a choice. Option one will be that you watch as I kill your mortal pet and your sister before finishing you off and eventually making new god quellers to work by my side. Option two, you and your sister may live to serve me as you were meant to. Whatever you choose, I will eventually have god reapers doing my bidding to slay any gods that get in my way. Oh, you think choose so? to serve me, and you can even keep the mortal in a cage to do with as you please. Though I will need to rid him of a limb or two as punishment for temporarily breaking my orb. Mythil couldn't hide the f Going through the back of Mythil's mind would be a lie. Like, don't touch his junk. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to. It was too easy of a joke not to make. Fear in her voice as she said, We'd all easily choose death over service to you, but it will not come to that. Tarsa chuckled. Well, we'll see what you have to say after our battle, once desperation sets in. She kicked Lorna across the ground and hovered into the air, gripping the orb tightly. Mithil's hand, clutching Trishula, actually seemed to be shaking. The grin on Tarsa's face was as menacing as ever. And Ordis loved wiping it away. The Archons were right. You are an absolute coward. Damn. Her head slowly turned Good. towards Ordis as he walked Good. past Mithil confidently with his head held high. What did you say to me, worm? He wasn't telling the exact truth, but kept up with his plan. Good enough. <laughs> I was relaying a message from the Archons, one I completely agree with, that you're an absolute coward. And by the way, they're here, watching through me, seeing you be a coward. In total fury, Tarsa flew down in front of Ordis. Mithil took a rapid step towards him, but Tarsa swung a hand and smacked Mithil across the mountaintop. Damn! She grabbed Ordis around the neck and raised him into the it's air. All because of that orb. You think you can fool me? The Archons have no way into this world. I've assured that is the case. Remaining as confident as he could, Ordis said, Well, you're not as good with your powers as you think, then. <laughs> Archons, got anything to say to her? The yellow Archon chuckled. I like this kid more and more every day. Tell her. Ortis listened, then said, mm -hmm. They say to tell you your old dimension, Z009, has been leveled to ash, and the new overseer, someone named Ludum, has big plans for what little remains. Ortis concealed his excitement as a flicker of fear darted across Tarsa's face. She released Ortis and shoved him backwards. He managed to say, You know, one thing that would be really cool would be like a community page of every single thing and story, of course, links to videos that Popcross has ever made so that you can be like, okay, hey, uh, who's this character? Uh, that's who they are. And this is a video that has the artwork. Boom. Kind of like one of the fandom wikis. Stay on his feet. Surprised she released him. Congratulations! You've just given me a reason to kill you first, mortal. Red lightning crackled off the orb across her body. Ordis said, Can't stand them watching? That is what a coward like you would do. I will make this as painful as I possibly- Go ahead! I'll just join the Archons again like I did after I faced you and Yomi. Then I can <clears throat> reminisce with them about what a coward you are. Being dead will not disprove the theory that you only have any might at all because you tricked the Archons into giving you power. Needing that orb to defeat Mythil proves that the only reason you ever beat the Archon's first Reaper they sent after you was because you had the orb and you still had to get lucky. Yeah. The red lightning crackled yes. off Tarsa, striking the ground all around Ordis. I had power enough to rule a whole universe with an iron fist before the Archons found me. 
Gaining the god overseer powers of this realm and tricking them into making me the orb is nothing more than a testament to my cunning and might. Still then prove it, Ordis yelled. Cow. Fight Mithil without the orb. Keep me alive so the Archons can watch through me and prove to them too that you're worth a damn without their power. You already sent monsters to weaken her before this fight. If you still need the orb to beat her now, you're really proving that you're nothing without the Archons' might. But if you don't care about having a semblance of pride, then go ahead and kill me and show the Archons that you're nothing more than a liar, a thief, <laughs> and a coward. Oh, Tarsa looked over this. at Mithil, who was back on her feet and ready for the fight. She looked back at Ordis, still furious, but contemplating. The lightning faded and she hovered back down to the ground. She tapped the orb in a few places and a red protective light barrier appeared around it. It hovered out of her hand into the air high above them. She marched over to Ordis and moved her face close to his own. Watch well, Archons. I'll Here destroy this pitiful excuse <laughs> for a false reaper without your precious powers. Then I'll shatter every bone in this mortal's body one by one, then heal him and do it again and again before finally allowing him to face his end. Boy, then that you petty may all hell. reminisce about how you lost to me again. Through Suriastra, the orange Archon said, Whoa, my proverbial hats off to you, kid. That was quite the little performance. But you'd better hope that middle gal is up to this. Ordis held his head high as he said aloud, She's ready. He and Tarsa both looked over to Mithil. She squeezed her hands around Trishula. <laughs> I'm ready. Tarsa sneered. Then let us end this. Oh man, this is just making me excited for the next video. I know it's out, but I'm gonna save that for next week. That way it can be paired with the final part of the Summoner's Destroy The Archons story were line. right. You are an absolute coward. Her head... <laughs> Ordis! <laughs> Blue balls. Proves that the only reason you ever beat the Archon's first Reaper they sent after you was because you had the orb, and you still had to get lucky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the absolute <laughs> ghoulies on this kid. Yeah! And show the Archons <laughs> that you're nothing more than a liar, a thief, and a coward. Like, Order has brass balls to, not to the ninth degree, to the 100th degree. Like, holy damn, Ortis! <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so fun yelling at Tarsa? It was very fun writing that Ortis chewing out Tarsa scene. And I am very excited for you all to see how Mythalethal wraps up in its next episode. And of course, this was a community redraw, so thank you to everyone who submitted for it, and a special thank you to the people who were chosen to have their creatures merged into Chimeras. Dragons are to bomb. Scarlet Raptor 6. Awesome. Apex Assassin 101. Nice. Archie Allen. Okay. Valente Martinez. Neat. And Niem Doka. Love. Now, for the next community redraw, what I want you to do is submit your own original menacing kind of supervillain sort of character. Because it's October, you might want to go a little bit Halloween-themed. So it can be like, mm. uh, you know, like a universal movie monster type character slash supervillain. Something in that sort of vein. That Basically, it's going cool. to be a character that would be very fitting to have in Dresden Oakland's Redemption Arc Support Foundation. Which, if you don't know what the RAS Foundation is, oh, yeah, I will link the, the episode where Dresden kind of decided that he was going to start making this foundation. But it's kind of like a more positive SCP foundation. Where some of the really menacing and monstrous beings they take in, they're actually trying to help redeem. Help mm -hmm. them become better people so that they can go back out in the world and do good things. Go and Deadlines on screen, also. submit to popcrossanimations at gmail.com. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note and the thought what I want got? to leave people with today is the idea that both faith and fear require you to believe in something that you can't see. You choose mm. which one to focus on. Read that one this week and I thought one. it was a nice simple one and I hope it's inspiring. I love you all and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday. Goodbye. Alright everyone, well that's going to be the end of today's video and I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original will be in the description below and I'll see all of you next time when we flick back on. Till then, this is Fox, signing out, peace.